गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट हिस्ट्री ऑफ क्लास एट एंड विल स्टार्ट टूडे चैप्टर नंबर सेवन द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज सिविलाइजिंग द नेटिव एजुकेटिंग द नेशन इट मीन्स इन दिस चैप्टर विल स्टडी अबाउट हाउ द ब्रिटिश ट्राई टू सिविलाइज द नेटिव इन फैक्ट वॉट वॉज द रीजन एंड how did they educate the people of india means entire nation what is the meaning of native native means indigenous people the real habitat of india uh, were uh, known as native people original habitat of india native people so uh, in the previous chapters we discussed that how the british controlled economic and political power in india and their rules and regulations and their decisions Uh, affected the nawabs rajas uh, local kings and the people so we discussed in the previous chapter so all these kinds of things so dear students in this chapter we will study that how the british tried to educate the people of india and why what was the process of educating the people of india by the british and uh, uh what was the real aim and real objective of the british that why did they want to educate indians first it is a very easy thing to understand that the british wanted the local labor and the local people those who could help the british in governing the country clear so in this way they wanted uh, the english educated people Uh, those who could help the british in ruling the country but this was the real aim this was the real objective that they wanted to educate indians but why uh, the people why the british were saying about civilizing mission what was the civilizing mission first of all we will discuss about civilizing civilizing mission what was civilizing mission right this was the false cause pretended by the british and explained by the british that why they were educating the indians due to civilizing mission what was civilizing mission try to understand it's a very easy concept civilizing mission means the british were uh, understanding about the asian people especially eastern asian people like indians so indians are uncivilized uneducated backward and primitive people and the british and other europeans were civilized they used to consider themselves advanced educated and very developed people so the british were saying that this was the duty of the europeans because they were civilized so this was the duty of the british and the europeans to educate to make them civilize the asian people especially in india so this was the civilizing mission that we are going to make uh, uncivilized people civilized uneducated people educated backward people advanced right and less developed people developed so this was the civilizing mission that that this is our mission this is our uh, this is our mission to make them civilized so we are ruling you people so the british were saying they were justifying understand they are uh, rule and govern uh, means governing on india over the country so this was the civilizing mission i hope that you understood that what was civilizing mission in this process first of all <coughs> uh, we will discuss about two ideas and uh, these ideas number 1 this is orientalism and another is anglicism right orientalism what is the orientalism what is anglicism orientalism is a theory or we can say this is ideology that favors eastern culture eastern culture that favors eastern culture eastern culture means this is this may be like indian culture right indian culture 
Anglicism. This is the ideology that favors Western culture. Western culture. Clear? Like British and other European people. So this is the basic difference between Orientalism and Anglicism. So now we'll study uh, in detail about Orientalism and Anglicism. So the first topic of this chapter is how the British uh, saw education. In civilizing mission, we uh, uh, explained about that uh, what was the real aim of the British and what were they saying as pretending uh, in front of the people. So how the British saw education in this, the first topic is the tradition of Orientalism. Orientalism. What was Orientalism? As we have discussed that Orientalism was the theory that favored the Indian culture, Indian uh, ancient text and uh, Eastern culture, right? So uh, what were the features or the main characteristics of this thinking and this ideology you have understood that the first is Indian civilization had attained its glory in the past. The people who uh, were on Orientalist they used to think, Orientalists were the British, they used to favor the ancient Asian culture. They used to understand that Indian civilization had attained its glory in the past. It means the past of the Asian culture was very glorious. Understand? It was glorious past of Asian culture. Second thing, they were discovering Indian ancient text. So to find out this uh, glorious tradition, so uh, they were trying to find out something more uh, by discovering Indian ancient text. Those books were written in the past, in the ancient time. Those manuscripts, they used to find the manuscripts also uh, were written in the past. Third is they used to believe in Indian tradition and languages because uh, uh, many of them used to uh, uh, learn the languages which were uh, spoken and were written in India uh, uh, from the ancient time. So in this way we can understand uh, by these three features that what was the tradition of Orientalism and what Orientalist used to think about Indian culture. Some Orientalist uh, we can take the example like uh, William Jones I am writing the name of uh, Orientalist people. William Johns and uh, Henry Thomas Colbrew. This is another example, and another example is Nathaniel uh, Nathaniel Helen. These are the examples of Orientalist. It means they were in favor of Indian culture and tradition and Indian text. Now, dear students, we will uh, study about these Orientalists one by one that what was their thinking and what was their experience, what they did uh, means uh, do regarding this Orientalist thinking. So, dear students, as we have discussed that these uh, three are the examples of uh, Orientalist means those people who favored Indian text and Indian culture William Jones was appointed in 1783 as junior judge, junior judge in Supreme Court of Calcutta, Supreme Court of Calcutta in Calcutta, right? He was a linguist also. Linguist, who is linguist? Linguist is a person who knows many languages who knows uh, many uh, other languages uh, rather than his uh, original language for example william jones knew uh, greek greek la uh, language french french latin latin arabic he learned arabic uh, from a friend from his friend and sanskrit also Sanskrit clear so along with English English he knew many languages so he had the knowledge of uh, some other languages so he is known as linguist he tried to uh, discover the Indian culture 
traditional Indian culture. Along with Henry Thomas Colebrook and Nathaniel Halle, they uh, were trying to discover that how the past of India was very uh, glorious and uh, they also were discovering the ancient text uh, of India and they wanted to explain that Indian past was uh, very bright and we have to learn so many things from Indian past and Indians also should be taught that what were they in the past clear so uh, they wanted to give uh, some kinds of education this kind of education to Indian people in which they uh, would be able to uh, know about their own past that what were they and what were they were having what kind of uh, uh, their past was there clear so William Jones H.T. Colbrook and Nathaniel Hallett these kinds of people were trying to uh, discover uh, this uh, particular or orientalism and uh, for this purpose they established Asiatic society society of Bengal of Bengal and Asiatic Asiatic researches this was the journal and this was the particular organization Asiatic for uh, this purpose and with this objective uh, in India two organizations were started uh, uh, we are going to uh, understand about these organization in uh, uh, 1781 uh, Madarasa Madarasa was started in Calcutta in Calcutta in which Arabic Arabic Persian and Islamic Islamic laws were taught in uh, the Madarasa that was established in 1781 so with the objective of Orientalism and in 1791 Hindu college Hindu college of Calcutta was established, uh, sorry, in Banaras. Hindu college was established in Banaras in 1791 with the objective of uh, teaching Sanskrit, Sanskrit text, to know about the Sanskrit text and uh, to explain about uh, Indian past with the Sanskrit text. So these were two organizations established in 1781 and 1791 uh, respectively. So dear students, in this way we have discussed about Orientalism. Clear? Now we will discuss about Anglicism. Simply you have to understand that what was Anglicism. Anglicism means, uh, I am telling you here, that uh, it was completely opposite idea to uh, Orientalism. Anglicism. Main analysis were uh, Thomas Macaulay. Thomas Macaulay. He started English education in India in 1835 with the Indian English Education Act 1835. Macaulay was in favor of Western education. This is uh, figure 3 Monument to Warren Hastings by Richard West Macaulay. 1830. It is now in Victoria Memorial in Calcutta. You can see in this image that uh, this is the statue of Warren Hastings. An enthusiastic supporter of Orientalist is placed between the standing figure of a Pandit and on one side and a seated Munshi on other side. Clear? So Hastings and other Orientalists needed Indian scholars to teach them the vernacular. What is the meaning of vernacular? Vernacular means regional languages, local and uh, languages and dialects. Tell them about local customs and laws and help them translate and interpret ancient texts. This uh, also was very necessary for ruling uh, the nation or the country that they should know about the local customs and laws uh, Hastings took the initiative to set up the Calcutta Madarsa and believed that the ancient customs of the country and oriental uh, learning ought to be the basis of British rule in India. So this was the importance of uh, orientalist thinking. <coughs>
ग्रे वर्स ऑफ द ईस्ट टिल नाउ वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट ओरेंटलिस्ट एंड ओरेंटलिज्म एंड वॉट वॉज दे आर थिंकिंग नाउ विल स्टडी अबाउट एंग्लिसिस्ट और एंग्लिसिज्म इन द बिगनिंग ऑफ दिस वीडियो वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ओरेंटलिस्ट एंड एंग्लिसिस्ट द पीपल हु आर हैविंग द डिफरेंट आइडियोलॉजीज सो मैनी पीपल स्टार्टेड टू क्रिटिसाइज ओरेंटलिस्ट थिंकिंग और ओरेंटलिस्ट विजन ऑफ लर्निंग they said that knowledge of east was full of errors and unscientific thought eastern literature was non serious and light hearted so they argued that it was wrong on part of the british to spend so much effort in encouraging the study of arabic and sanskrit languages and literature so simply in this paragraph we have understood that uh, anglicist uh, ideology was completely against the orientalist ideology because they were uh, feeling that arabic and sanskrit and uh, liter this kind of traditional literature and traditional languages were not so useful for the western people so one of them was james mill who attacked the orientalist the british effort he declared should not be to teach what the natives wanted or what they respected in order to please them and win a place in their heart it means we uh, should not uh, worry about the thinking of the native and we should not worry about uh, the support of the native and the aim of education ought to be to teach what was useful and practical so indian should be made familiar with the scientific and technical advances that the west had made rather than with the poetry and sacred literature of orient as it was found in uh, sanskrit and other Uh, languages literature by the 1830s attack on the orientalist became sharper one of the most outspoken and influential of such critics of the time was thomas bebington macole about which we have discussed in this video before a short while and uh, he saw india as an uncivilized country that needed to be civilized no branch of eastern knowledge according to him could be compared to what england had produced who could deny declared macole that a single shelf of a good european library was worth the whole native literature of india and arabia it means he uh, thought that the western literature and western culture is much better than the eastern culture and eastern literature he asked that the british government in india stop wasting public money in promoting oriental learning for it was no practical use so at last he started english education in india following macaulay's minute the english education act of 1835 was introduced the decision was to make english the medium of instruction for higher education and to stop the promotion of oriental institutions like calcutta madrasa and banaras sanskrit college these institutions were seen as temples of darkness that were falling off themselves into Decay. English textbooks now began to be produced for schools. So, uh, in eighteen thirty-five, in India, English education was started. First of all, this thing you have to learn and remember. And the second thing that the education system also was changed with this act that was known as English Education Act of eighteen thirty-five. That was based on Macaulay's minute. What was Macaulay's minute? Whatever Macaulay thought about the education, and uh, Uh, he gave the ideas and these ideas and suggestions were known as macaulay's minute so dear students in this video we have discussed whatever you have understood these uh, topics in the next video we'll start with the topic education for commerce in which we will study about woods dispatch thank you have a nice day